We're just off the coast of Namibia and I thought that I'd take this opportunity to uh, explain exactly how the needle works because I'm sure that it's mystifying uh, many people who've been following these videos. So this dipping needle built in the early 1840s and kindly lent to us by uh, the Polly down in Falmouth um, was the design of Robert Weir Fox. It has two purposes, to measure the dip of the earth the dip of the Earth's magnetic field, and then to measure its intensity. Now the dip is relatively simple to measure. All you have to do is find out where the north is, you point the needle in the direction of the north, the needle will then dip relative to the Earth's magnetic field. And if you imagine this sort of like two bar magnets, if you have two south poles and you try and force them together, they'll push each other away, but you can sort of bring the magnet round from a degree of about 90 around to zero. And this roughly relates to the North Pole or South Pole and the magnetic equator. So, once we've found out where the North Pole is, and once we've put this uh, pointing towards the North Pole, then the question is, how do you calculate the Earth's magnetic intensity? And this is where this instrument is so ingenious. Because what this instrument actually does is it weighs it weighs the Earth's magnetic field. To do this, inside here, on the magnetic dipping needle, there is a little grooved wheel. And you put a bit of silk thread on that uh, with these two hooks on. We're, uh, currently, the needle is uh, not quite showing the right dip, but we're roughly, I think we're roughly on about five degrees. What you do is you insert in the rear of the needle a fixed constant magnet. So if I put in a south magnet here, the needle should, with any luck, move somewhat. Or if I put that in the... Uh, just a second. <laughs> Uh, it is oscillating slightly. Uh, ah. So we get a bit of movement there. We get a deflection which is caused by the application of a fixed constant magnet. Then what you do is you open up this here and you use these tweezers to apply incredibly fine weights from this little box here. Now these are measures of a grain. There's uh, some grain weights, half grains, quarter of a grain. It goes down to 0 0.0125 of a grain. And you keep adding these to the hooks to bring the needle back to the dip of the earth. And what you've done there is you've converted the deflection in degrees into a measurement of weight in terms of grain. And that is basically how you measure the Earth's magnetic intensity. Of course, this is an incredibly fiddly operation, and you can't really do it if the weather's not very well. As you can see, it's a relatively calm day, and even now, the weights are jangling around. So, under poor conditions, you close the lid, and you simply measure the degrees deflection of the needle. And then you measure the Earth's intensity in terms of degrees. And this isn't so precise, it's not as good as actually weighing the Earth's magnetic field, but it still gives you some idea of how the field is changing as you move around the world. When you're at the magnetic pole, either north or south, the intensity is going to be far greater than when you get to the magnetic equator. Anyway, um, we'll carry on performing experiments over the next few days as we head further south um, on our way down to Cape Town. 